The purpose of this video is to describe this 1987 El Camino to the person that recently bought it. I did not uh, look at the El Camino until it came here already bought for the end uh, purchaser. You know, I provide the uh, pre-purchase inspections for a lot of people. I didn't have any input at all on this one. It just uh, came as a phone call. I'm bringing a car, dropping it off so you can send it to the guy that bought it. Uh, he wants a little report, so um, it's a little after the fact, after the purchase report, but let's do it. Now, the uh, this one's repainted, original color and a repaint. Somebody's added a little pinstripe to it. I, I covered up, I don't normally cover up the uh, license plates, but in this case I'm just doing it because if I say anything that offends somebody, I don't want them to think, oh, that's my El Camino, it's not that bad or not that good or whatever. So we just walk around a little bit. Now in the 80s, the uh, uh, emissions people started talking about different ways that we're going to uh, require manufacturers to put emissions on engines and um, restrict them and to uh, fuel economy and all kinds of things. So this has the 50 V8 with the quadrajet carburetor, but it's the um, uh, has the first gen um, emission system that uh, puts a little uh, solenoid valve on the uh, quadrajet. So that little solenoid's constantly rattling in there changing the mixture a little bit of a problem I don't know if you can even get those little things anymore if they fail the tips used to break off of them um, this one is running rich when you first start it because the choke pull-off is not working and then of course uh, the choke pull-off is um, is uh, not opening the choke enough so it starts to flood out tells the computer it's too rich, starts changing the uh, that mixture valve and everything just kind of goes goofy until you can warm it up and get going. You know actually pretty clean interior you can see that it has some wear. Um, this velour stuff uh, the fuzz wears off of it and it just kind of comes a little bit bare but it's very good condition otherwise for 1987. We'll look at the pedal wear and it's uh, worn quite a lot on the brake pedal. Um, these uh, usually are in this condition they they don't live very long on the console. Carpet and everything's pretty good shape back here. I don't know how much of it's original but could be that it is all original. It still has the correct jack and everything in there as well. Nice set of gauges. Steering wheel is pretty decent for the age. The Original radio is in there, one of the better, higher quality radios. But you see the, the pop rivet that holds the power button on. That's worn out. Uh, at least it's not cut out um, stock inside. I One of the things that I don't like is somebody says, oh, I got $3,000 worth of stereo in it. Yeah, well, you just cut out the door panels and blew those, and you cut out your dash, and you cut this out and that out. And I don't want to listen to a three thousand dollar stereo. I want to see it original. Buying these old cars, it's nice to find something that somebody hasn't messed up by modifying or cutting things up and holes in the dash and ruining good original parts that you can't get anymore. So, my opinion. Uh, under the hood, pretty original, just a little bit dirty. And like I said, it has the. Uh, the quadrajet that has the um, electronic controller on it. See, there's the O2 sensor in it down there. <clears throat> Buying these cars, this new, especially in the state of California, in 1975 and on, they require an annual smog inspection for registration. So to get them smog, they got to have all the original pieces and parts on them, and they also have to have the correct um, emissions sticker information here. So if it's staying in California, we've got to make sure that stuff is intact and that it really has passed the uh, emission test. 
when I'm looking at the cars, I'll look at suspension and hoses, um, the wear on uh, belts and lines, and try to look and see what's original and what's not. You can see the upper control arm bushings down there, a little bit cracked, but they're still intact. It's, it's surprising how many cars those things are completely beat out of when I go look at them. Little boot on the uh, steering U joint is cracked, that's pretty usual. But looking at everything else, the um, power steering box, hoses, lines, all pretty dry. So it looks pretty good in there. I don't see any um, uh, AC compressor oil slung out from uh, the compressor front seal where they usually leak. And all these hoses and fittings look dry at the places where they sometimes leak at the fittings, all clean and dry. It's had a radiator put in it at some time. So it's not the original radiator, it's a aftermarket kind of a universal with the plastic tanks. That's okay as long as it uh, didn't, didn't overheat before that uh, radiator got replaced. And of course we'll check fluids, hoses, wires, see if everything is um, original and not messed with. Uh, I don't like seeing uh, AC systems with the with the uh, test port caps gone, but that's also pretty common, unfortunately. Looking down here at the battery box and battery, it's all clean and dry, pretty good. Of course, this is an 87, and I'm usually looking at cars that are from the 60s and 70s. Things are a little bit different on those 50s, 40s, 30s, whatever. Um, okay, so. We're looking at things here and, and I don't really see any problems. It's nice to see that the original hood pad is still intact, not hanging down in good shape. Um, looks pretty good there. Hood fits good. It's a repaint that's not too bad. Looks actually okay. Chrome bumpers, rubber inserts on the bumpers are all pretty good. This one has the uh, that uh, air dam underneath. I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, aftermarket re re replacement. Okay, looking underneath, uh, looking for um, evidence of damage, leaks, oil, debris, um, the condition of the rubber bushings, and so forth that we can see. I'm going to go down the side of it. I'm looking down the side. Looks looks pretty good. Everything fits well. Glass is pretty good. The rubber around the uh, doors, the weather strip is all really good, actually. Um, doors, door jams, bottoms of doors. Let's take a look inside the uh, door jam area. Look and see if everything's good in there. See if there's any evidence of uh, rust or damage in there. It all looks good. Back here, the original spare and jack and everything is right there. That's unusual. Uh, nice headliner. Lights working. Dome lights out of place. Don't know why. Door pulls pretty good, not not peeling off or loose, missing the little escutcheon there, and of course all the plastic uh, uh, plating on the trim is starting to come off. You see that on the door panels here, missing those pieces. Okay, back window El Camino, everything looks good under the mat all clean. The caulking around the edges all looks good and I've checked inside on the floors to see that uh, it's dry inside. Then I'm going to look down in the, under here at the rockers. I want to see good clean rockers, the frame, the floors, everything good. Um, all these cobwebs here, spider webs, so it's been parked someplace where it picked up spiders and a little bit of debris. Okay, back here, exhaust pipe, black, sooty, 
that's that rich condition that I was talking about with the choke pull off and the metering valve and the O2 sensor and everything kind of talking to each other. Aftermarket wheels, sure be nice to see the original rallies on it, but it is what it is. Okay, an El Camino, we're going to open up the tailgate. We're going to look around here and see how they, they did when they repainted it. I'm overspray and stuff in there. Look at the bottom of the tailgate to see if the tailgate's in good shape, how much beat up it's been. It's actually pretty good. And of course, the actual floor of the El Camino underneath this mat. Looks like at one time they had some kind of tie downs in here. Gone now. Pretty decent back here. We'll open up the gas door, look inside there, see what uh, kind of uh, work has been done around this area. So it's got air shocks added. There's the filler valve there. And again, underneath the rockers. See what we got. And back around to the store. All looking pretty good. And these are soft, these, uh, the rubbers here, all soft and in good shape. They're not hard and brittle. I've already tested the power windows. They work. The tilt wheel works. The, all the lights, everything work. Um, and, uh, you know, it's pretty decent 87 El Camino. So there you go. Uh, kind of a walk around view and a little bit of a description of some of the things that I'll look at. Of course then I'll road test it if I'm sent out to do a, a pre-purchase inspection and then make a report. So there you are, 87 El Camino walk around and brief inspection report for the new buyer. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.